Burkina Faso has given the West a taste of their own medicine and exposed their troops for resource exploitation. It all went down in what can only be seen as a remarkable display of unity and defiance. African leaders took center stage at the 2023 UN summit to address their grievances against Western powers. Their collective voice echoed through the assembly hall, disrupting the usual diplomatic discourse with bold statements and calls for action that diverged from the traditional diplomatic script. The president of Ghana made headlines with his outspoken criticism of the UN, branding it as deeply unfair. His words reverberated across the assembly hall, challenging the established norms and prompting a revaluation of global institutions' effectiveness and fairness. Meanwhile, the president of the Democratic Republic of Congo shook things up by demanding the withdrawal of UN peacekeeping forces from his nation. This demand signaled a growing dissatisfaction with external interventions in African affairs and underscored the continent's desire for greater autonomy and sovereignty. However, it was Burkina Faso that truly captured the spotlight with a courageous address delivered by a representative on behalf of Captain Ibrahim Traer, the country's transitional president. This speech shed light on the actions of Western nations, bringing attention to issues that are often overlooked in global discourse. Since coming to power following a coup in 2022, Ibrahim Tror has led Burkina Faso through a tumultuous transitional period. Recognizing the weight of his message, Traer Estupi, dressed in his military uniform, made a strategic decision to send his Minister of State to deliver the address at the UN General Assembly. This calculated move not only amplified the impact of the message, but also highlighted the seriousness with which African leaders approached their concerns on the international stage. By choosing to speak out at the UN, they demonstrated their commitment to addressing injustices and shaping a fairer, more equitable world order. Despite Captain Abraham Traer's absence at the summit, his influence loomed large as his meticulously crafted words, delivered by his representative, stirred discomfort among Western leaders. The Minister of State began his address by honoring revered leaders such as Che Guevara, Martin Luther King Jr., Malcolm X, Nelson Mandela, and Jomo Kenyatta. These figures, he noted, tragically faced violence, imprisonment, or assassination for bravely advocating for their oppressed communities. In a departure from flowery language, the Minister of State promised to speak plainly, aiming to convey the unfiltered truth. He pulled back the curtain on the deception inherent in politics, the hypocrisy of diplomacy, the relentless pursuit of power, and the dark impulse of one person to dominate another. His words left no doubt as to whom he was referring. The Minister of State highlighted a troubling trend, the widening chasm between the lofty promises made in annual speeches and the stark reality of actions taken or not taken regarding the principles outlined in the UN Charter. Despite the Charter's lofty ideals of justice, equality, dignity, and adherence to international law, these principles seemed increasingly distant from reality. He pointed to recent events in Libya, the Sahel region, and the Russia-Ukraine crisis as stark examples of this discord. In Libya, where catastrophic flooding claimed thousands of lives, nations offered condolences and projected unity in defense of these values. However, the minister demanded intellectual honesty and moral accountability. He highlighted the uncomfortable truth that past actions or collusion in supporting those responsible for Libya's calamities, including the assassination of Colonel Muammar Gaddafi in 2011, could not be ignored. Against the backdrop of condolences and displays of unity, the minister emphasized the urgent need for intellectual honesty and moral reckoning. He underscored the complicity whether collective or individual, in perpetuating Libya's suffering and called for a candid examination of past actions and their consequences. The Minister of State lamented the missed opportunity for Libya to chart a different course, one free from invasion and the violent removal of its leader. He underscored the tragic loss of what Libya could have become had it been allowed to flourish without external interference. Moreover, the minister emphasized the crucial need for the United Nations to maintain its integrity and resist manipulation by any nation. He exposed past instances where powerful countries like the United States had exploited the UN to disrupt global peace. 
Additionally, he addressed the unfortunate reality of certain African leaders subjecting the continent to humiliation through irresponsible governance. Highlighting the importance of African unity and solidarity, the minister stressed the need for collective action to prevent imperialist forces from wreaking havoc on nations like Niger, reminiscent of the tragic events witnessed in Libya. Shifting the focus to the Ukraine-Russian war crisis, Burkina Faso highlighted the persistent conflict fueled by vested interests, several Western nations, notably the United States and the European Union. The Minister of State brought attention to the unsettling sight of Ukrainian civilians being armed and depicted as patriotic fighters, operating tanks amidst the conflict. This portrayal raised concerns about the escalation of violence and the exploitation of civilians in warfare. Rather than fueling the conflict, the United Nations should step in as a responsible mediator to facilitate a peaceful resolution and end the suffering of civilians caught in the crossfire. In shedding light on the true intentions of the West, the minister drew parallels to previous conflicts in Mali, Nigeria, and Burkina Faso, where nations found themselves embroiled in wars under the guise of combating terrorism. However, instead of achieving peace and stability, these interventions led to widespread devastation and terror, prompting scrutiny of the underlying motivations behind such actions. The minister expressed profound disappointment at the conduct of certain heads of state within ECOWAS and the African Union, who, influenced by capitalist imperialist forces, unjustly labeled patriotic individuals as militias. These unfounded accusations undermined the legitimacy of those fighting for their communities and raised doubts about the international community's sincerity in combating terrorism. Furthermore, the minister highlighted instances of Western and UN interference, notably the cynical sanctions imposed on Burkina Faso following the events of September 30, 2022. These actions not only hindered the nation's development, but also underscored the need for greater scrutiny of external interventions and their impact on the sovereignty and stability of nations. The Minister of State of Burkina Faso delivered a defiant message directly confronting the so-called international community, led by France, which had attempted to impose its preferred candidate for the role of Prime Minister in Burkina Faso. This bold rejection of external interference was a clear statement of Burkina Faso's sovereignty and independence, delivered without hesitation and directly to France's face. Furthermore, the minister exposed France's audacious attempts to influence critical government positions in Vietnam, only to be met with staunch resistance. This revelation shed light on France's persistent efforts to exert its influence beyond its borders and manipulate the internal affairs of other nations. The minister also highlighted the West's use of blackmail as a means to compel other nations to comply with their prescribed policies. This coercive tactic was denounced, with a stern warning that those in power who fail to assist nations in peril will be held accountable by history. The minister pointed out the hypocrisy of the international community's neglect in aiding states under terrorist attacks, exposing the dominance of certain powers within the UN. Burkina Faso emphasized that the African people's grievances were not rooted in anti-French sentiments, but rather in issues such as condescension, arrogance, exploitation of resources, and organized crime perpetuated by Western powers. The minister emphasized the African people's firm rejection of control or domination, particularly through the manipulation of conflicts and terrorism, as evidenced in Mali, Burkina Faso, and Niger. These nations have experienced firsthand the devastating consequences of manufactured conflicts and terrorist activities, perpetuated by external forces seeking to assert their influence. African nations are keenly aware of the multifaceted challenges they face, including economic, social, cultural, and security issues stemming from historical remnants, such as colonial debts and currency-related matters. Burkina Faso underscored that African countries refuse to bear the burden of debts that perpetuate suffering while striving for genuine emancipation and autonomy. Of particular concern is the arrangement between France and West and Central African countries, where France produces currency bills for these nations in exchange for custody of their gold reserves. This arrangement, essentially trading valuable gold reserves for mere paper currency, exposes a troubling form of structural exploitation that undermines the economic sovereignty of African nations.
In light of this exploitative dynamic, the true intentions behind the deployment of Western troops under the guise of UN peacekeeping missions in Africa come into sharp focus. Rather than promoting peace and stability, these missions serve as a means for Western powers to maintain their grip on the region and further their economic and geopolitical interests. It becomes increasingly clear that the primary agenda behind the deployment of Western troops and UN peacekeeping forces in Africa was never solely about bringing stability or fostering peace within the continent. Instead, these forces have been mobilized to exploit Africa's abundant resources for their own economic gain. Reports and claims from African countries, notably Mali, have surfaced, suggesting France's involvement in supporting terrorist groups within the region. This insidious tactic allows for the subsequent deployment of human peacekeeping forces under the guise of eradicating terrorism. However, despite these efforts, the eradication of terrorist factions remains elusive. For instance, in the case of Congo, where human forces have been present for over 25 years, they have failed to eliminate terrorist groups operating within the region. This pattern underscores the fact that the presence of UN forces and Western troops in Africa is not driven by genuine intentions to combat terrorism, but rather by a desire to exploit and plunder Africa's precious natural resources. This exploitation has raised significant questions about the true motives behind Western involvement in peacekeeping efforts on the African continent. Do you agree with Burkina Faso's assertion that Western troops are solely present in Africa to exploit and plunder its natural resources? Let us know in the comments if you enjoyed this video. Please leave a like, as well as a sub so more people can see our content.